Hi guys. Welcome back to my channel. Um, as you can see, I'm currently pulling apart a project. This hasn't gone as planned so far. Let me catch you up real quick. Hey guys. <laughs> Today I'm just going to be starting a project that feels good for my soul. That's what I need right now. This is the color palette that we're working with. This is the inspiration. And that's, that's, I mean, should I say anything else? Is there anything else? How are you, by the way? I am going to, I don't have a plan. <laughs> Let me show you the yarn. That's kind of important. This was on sale at Michael's, so that's why I picked it. It is a bulky weight, size five, um, and it recommends an eight millimeter hook. So that's what I got. And then I'm just going to slip stitch into the first chain there. Okay, so I'm going to half double crochet in all of the stitches around. And then I'm going to do um, alternating front post and back post half double crochet to get the ribbing look. I'll link a tutorial to that down below if you don't know what I'm talking about. Okay, so I did this last night and I don't love it. I have a plan though. I have a vision in my mind. I also learned of a stitch called the waistcoat stitch. <coughs> the waistcoat stitch and it looks more like knitting. I'll show you guys once it starts to work up a little bit. So I did my first round increasing every fourth stitch. Again, I don't do tutorials here, but for the waistcoat stitch, you do single crochet. Instead of putting your hook under the stitch like you normally would, you put it in between this V, kind of like where the bulk of the stitch is. That's, that's the explanation I have for you. I'll show you guys after a few rows what it starts to work up to look like. And this is where we're at. Look at how beautiful. Okay, so I also have a confession. I got about this far the other day and then I had to undo it because increasing Every four was way too much. It was gonna be the biggest sweater ever created. I think it would have been fine, but because this yarn, it like, it's not gonna drape very well, so it's just gonna be like a balloon. And I, I think that like, this is even gonna be a little bit balloony. I only increased six times. And if I'm being honest, I kinda wish I didn't increase at all. I think it'll be fine. <laughs> no, 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 no. I don't know. I had a realization. So I've been going in the round, right? And when I split for the sleeves, I'm going to be going flat. So back and forth. And I didn't really think about the fact that with this stitch, it might look different because you have to turn your work and crochet the other side. Randomly, I just like took a piece and I just started going back and forth just to see. And it is like ever so slightly different. Like the V's line up a little bit different just because it's the nature of like flipping your work back and forth. And I feel like it's not different enough that it's actually gonna bother me. I think I just don't care. I'm concerned. I just like put this on my body, you know, like in my midsection area to like feel it out. And it's gonna be huge. Like I wanted it to be like an oversized chunky knit sweater but because it's stiff it's not like stiff stiff but it's chunky so it's not it doesn't have like that nice draping i'm just gonna look like a balloon i don't want to take all of this out because i've already done that so we're just continuing i don't know what to tell you but um this might be turning into a fail okay so remember when i said that doing this stitch in the round was going to be slightly different than doing it flat. And I said I didn't care. Turns out I was wrong. I care a lot. I care a lot. Um, this is where we're at. You can see exactly where I split and the stitch changes pretty drastically. I hate it. I really wish I had just done two separate panels um, so the whole thing would look like this. I like the way this looks better, but you can't do the whole thing in the round. 
because you have to split for sleeves, obviously. I mean, at this point, I have to just press on. I also just ran out of yarn, so I have to go get more yarn, so I have time to think about what I've done to myself and how I want to move forward, but it's fine. It's gonna be fine. Okay, so I'm feeling pretty good about it. Things are kind of looking up right now. I don't want to get too ahead of myself, but feeling kind of optimistic for the first time in a while. So once I finish this second V side for the front, I am going to sew the shoulder tabs and I'm gonna try it on. I can already picture it in my head and I already know it's not gonna look good. So don't get your hopes up. That's what we're working with. I wanted a very wide, big neckline, so that's good. The ribbing is gonna make it a little bit smaller obviously hope <laughs> hopefully because dang <laughs> like what? <laughs> what guys i don't know do we think i can redeem this holding on to a little bit of hope but like what is that <laughs> <laughs> There's so much fabric. Oh no. All right. Um I don't know what to do. What I don't know what to do. I don't really want to talk about it. <laughs> it's been a few days and I feel like I've mentally recovered. So I've decided to just completely start over. First of all, I should have gone with my instinct and I should have made a cardigan instead of a sweater because the more I think about it and picture it in my head, that's what I want it to be. So I don't know why I was gonna do a sweater. There were just so many things that went wrong. So I actually bought, it's over there, I bought a 10 millimeter hook to size up slightly because I was using an eight millimeter, but I'm hoping that the 10 millimeter with the waistcoat is gonna give like better draping. That combined with keeping the stitch consistent and just doing back and forth, back and forth, instead of in the round, you know. We learned a lot. Don't I always say that? I feel like no matter what project I'm working on, I always learn a lot. So I guess that's like the point, but it's also super frustrating. I'm going to work from the back to the front once I have this all unraveled, I will touch base with you. All right, so I have started the ribbing just for the back. I think I chained 38. This is my fourth row, and I think that's about as wide as I'm going to make it. Yeah. Look at this chunky ass hook. So we've got my 10 millimeter hook now. So I've finished my last half of double crochet. I'm going to chain one and turn. I'm not going to do any increases. I'm going to keep the same number of stitches, especially since I sized up my hook. I don't want to have the body of this sweater be way, way too big. Hopefully it turns out better. <laughs> I think anything will be better than what it was, so. The only thing I'm worried about is how wide it's getting, even though I didn't increase and I kind of knew that was gonna happen. It is actually gonna be pretty big on me at this stage. So you know what? Because I need to trust my gut more, I'm undoing it again. How, why do I keep doing, guys, guys, I didn't increase at all from the ribbing, but I think I need to actually decrease a few. I don't freaking know, guys. This is... This is wild. This journey is wild. All right, starting at square king one again. I think I'm going to decrease one, decrease two, and then maybe once in the middle, and then twice on the other edge. I figure even if I decrease now, I can always increase further up closer to the shoulders if I want the shoulders to kind of drop down a little bit. Okay, so this is as big as I am gonna go. 
for the tan stripe. I'm really happy with the fact that I decreased along the bottom before coming up because it is still slightly slanted outwards. Yeah, it's not too drastic of a change, but I think as I move up to the shoulders, I am going to increase slightly. And I'm gonna start on this first white row. I'm going to increase just once on each end um, and then just you know go up normally a few rows to just like see how much that changes the width I think I've reached the length that I want holding it up to myself it comes down to like my waist I do want it to be not like cropped but I don't want it to be too long so somewhere in the middle yeah just you know so the plan what is the plan i am going to work on one side this side since i have my yarn still attached um for the front and then i'll do the other side and i'm going to start thinner and end up increasing a bit so the neckline kind of comes at a diagonal okay so i've done seven stitches and I think the plan, so there's 18 stitches on each side. So I'm gonna do seven stitches for a few rows so as like it comes up and over the shoulder. And then I'm gonna start increasing to create like a V. And I think because I'm adding like a couple inches of ribbing, um, there's 18 stitches on each side. I'm just gonna go up to 16 on each side and then the ribbing will account for the rest of the space, perhaps. I don't know. <laughs> I'm really excited about this project, but I'm like fully losing steam right now. I'm a little bit struggling to find my enthusiasm and I apologize about that. I think when I start increasing, I'm not going to increase every row. I'm going to increase maybe every other row so it's not as drastic of a an angle. I kind of want it to be like a subtle and like a deeper V, not like a... You know what I mean? Wait a damn minute. I just had another realization. <laughs> so by continuing up this way from the back panel to the front, this is gonna be flipped. That means that on the back, all the V's point up and on the front, all the V's will point down. Does that make sense? Should I just make two separate front panels from bottom to top and sew them together? Now that's something that I don't think literally anyone would notice. So I think that's more of a, a me problem, potentially. I think I don't care. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with how this turned out actually. I did um, seven stitches across and I did nine rows. On my 10th row, I started increasing every other row. So I went from seven to 16 over the course of, from from the first row to here is 27 rows. And then I just went straight down from there. I think that's 13 rows. And then I finished off with the ribbing. I did four rows of that and it's looking pretty good. Don't you think? So I'm just going to do the same thing on the other side. And that's all I have to say about that. Hi guys, I'm... I skipped a few chapters and made sleeve number one because I felt like it. <laughs> and I wanted to make sure I was gonna do it correctly before I showed you guys, because I've already made far too many mistakes in this video and I'm, yeah. So I haven't like sewed anything together yet. This is just chilling, but the sleeve is definitely long enough. I'm going to start sleeve number two. So the cuff is, yeah, I chained 18. So there's 18 stitches. I connected them like connected them with the slip stitch and then I did half double crochet the same as this ribbing. I realize now how funny I look with this deconstructed sweater on my body, but okay. So the other thing, you know, I did the whole sweater as a flat piece of work. So I was working back and forth and back and forth right now for this it's in the round and you could do it where you you do a row and then you slip stitch chain one turn your work and do 
the row the other way so that you're still working flat, you know, so you're switching your work back and forth, but it ends up being all connected. But my brain hurts right now. And I tried to do that and I kept on messing up the slip stitch chain one. It just was looking really messy along like the seam. And so I said, you know what? I'm just gonna go in the round. So that's what I did. And I mean, you really can't tell the difference between the sleeve and the body of the sweater in terms of being in the round and not in the round. Like that's okay, that's okay with me. That's my confession. That's me being lazy and also just kind of like the morale, the morale is low if I'm being honest. So I am just going to power through this today, hopefully. I'm a mess, it's fine. So there's 18 stitches. I increased three times. Every sixth stitch, I'll do two. And then throughout the rest of the sleeve, I increased just four more times. And I just did it kind of intermittently. I increased a total of five times from 18 stitches at the cuff to 33 stitches at the top. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> So I'm just gonna work on this sleeve, hopefully finish it, and then I will check back in with you because the next thing I'm gonna do is sew all the pieces together and I will kind of show you how I do that. Okay, slight change of plans because I ran out of white yarn for my second sleeve. So we're gonna just shift gears and I'm going to start doing the ribbing around like the collar area. What do you want, Toby? The plan is I'm going to use my eight millimeter hook, which is my smaller hook. And I'm going to do the same ribbing that I did for the bottom. I'm just gonna crochet it right into the sweater. So I'm gonna go in with just a row of half double crochet and then I'll start doing the front post and back post and see if it starts to look how I want it to. Okay, so here's where we're at. Oh my God, cute from far away, at least from like looking at the camera. I kind of love, so this is two rows this is three. I think I'm gonna do three all the way around. What do we think? Actually, this would be really cute as just like a sweater vest. Do I switch plans? No, we're not changing plans. I already made my sleeves. Oh my god, cute! All right, let me go look in the mirror and make sure I'm not like lying to myself right now. Low key, I kind of like just the two rows. I think three might be too much. So I think I'm gonna stop there. So what I'm gonna do though is sew up the sides and sew on this sleeve and then just finish this sleeve later. I'm feeling fabulous about this. We've come a long way from the beginning, haven't we? So this is all inside out. That's like a big thing. I've done that before. I've sewed a sleeve on, whatever. Just turn your shit inside out. So what I'm gonna do is just like line the sleeve up where I'm gonna end up sewing it and just like put in, I use wire as stitch markers. So I'm just like putting in a piece of wire through the front and the back to mark and kind of hold together where to stop sewing the body and where the sleeve will start. Okay. Okay, guys, I have one sleeve on, but I'm gonna show you anyways, because I have a design flaw that I didn't think through. In theory, I kind of wanted like the tan to match with the tan. I didn't think about this. Why don't I think about these things? But you know what I mean? Like in the picture, Obviously, this sweater that they made was longer, so the tan matched up with the tan. 
but I kind of cropped my sweater. So the tan literally ends where the other tan begins. And I know I have long arms, but it just looks funny. I don't know, what do you guys think? Like it looks so much better when my arm is like folded up like this because it like looks like it's, but then when my arm is down, oh my God. Does that bother anyone else? It bothers me a lot, but you know what? We've made it this far with this sweater. I can't go back now. Okay, so I'm done. I went and got more yarn. I finished the sleeve and I sewed it on. And I didn't tell you about any of it because this video is already way too long. So here we are. This is the grand finale. I have to turn this right side out. So here's the sweater and let's try it on. I mean, I'm pretty happy with it. There's certain things I don't love. I think I would have come up a little more closer to the neck for this because it does kind of want to come off my shoulders. The sleeves are a little bit long. I almost considered making my second one shorter and detaching my first one to make it shorter and then I was like, no. I'm just leaving it. Plus, like, I like to be cozy, so it's okay. But in terms of, like, the way it fits on the body, I like the size. It's not too big. So, yeah, here's my chunky little sweater. Cardigan. Whatever. It's been a freaking journey. And it's over. And it's cozy. I think... I redeemed myself. I don't think this was a complete fail. I hope you enjoyed following along all of my mishaps. And it's really nice to be back on YouTube. I took a break. I can't make any promises because my life is a little bit wild right now. But I'm still here. I'm still kicking. I'm still making stuff. So thanks for being here with me. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you in my next one. Bye.